This is Forge Daily with Mackenzie Barwell on the Forge Audio Network. Welcome to this episode of Forge Daily. I'm your host, Mackenzie Barwell, coming to you now Friday, May 31st, 2024. Really excited about today's episode because not only do Forge take on York United back at home tomorrow for another CPL regular season match, but they recently hosted another pro combine. So I had a conversation about that. Plus the Canadian championship semifinal draw recently happened and Forge FC have a shot at redemption. So let's start off today's episode with that. The last time I talked about the draw, we knew the potential teams, but we're still waiting on the result between Atletico Ottawa and Pacific FC. On Wednesday night, it would be Pacific to take a 2-1 victory over Atletico Ottawa to secure their spot in the semis. And credit to them, they played an outstanding game. If you watch the highlights, you'd know that they had plenty of opportunities to score more than two goals. The draw happened shortly after, and it would be confirmed that it's the Battle of BC between Pacific and Vancouver FC. And then on the other side of things, the Battle of the GTA, I guess you could say, between Forge and Toronto FC. After practice this morning, I talked to Kyle Becker and Ali Hijabrapur and asked them what their initial thoughts were when they saw the draw results and remembering the last time they played TFC in 2022. Uh, To be honest, I had a kind of a feeling that we were getting at TFC. I don't know why. I don't know why I thought that, but yeah... It was in the air. I honestly thought that, too. Yeah, I thought there was just going to be like an East versus West battle and we were going to get TFC, you know, unless Ottawa, of course, won. But it just happened that we're going to play Toronto and play them a couple of times or once in the past. And it was a good game here at Tim Warren's Field. So it's going to be fun. The knockout games at this point in a cup of competition are always fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Excited. I think it's uh, obviously it's a huge test and uh, something that I think the group's looking forward to. Um, we obviously had that, that final we played here a few years ago. That was great. Went down to penalties, but obviously came out on the wrong side of it. So I think it's always exciting to, to test yourself against uh, a new group, new opponents. Obviously, these guys uh, on the other side are going to be quite good, and, and they have something to prove as well. Um, so I think we have a bunch of guys in the locker room who've, who've played in, in that building, whether it's the academy or in the first team. So, yeah, I just think there's something different about this group right now. Um, I think on our day, we can be very good, and, and there's a lot of guys with a lot of stuff to prove. So um, I think it's just a matter of building week in and week out and just keep working towards that end goal. But I think uh, when we're firing, there's a lot to be excited about. And so hopefully on that day, we can piece it together and, and get a result. Very exciting stuff, I have to say. Both guys sounded quite eager to get the job done when I spoke to them this morning. Understanding the significance of this matchup from both a fan and business perspective, I also got the opinion of Tom Walker. He's the senior manager of business development here at Forge FC and also an expert on this team, to say the least. So here's what he said when I asked him about his reaction. Revenge. (laughs) (laughs) Uh... Beat us on pens in the 2020 final played in 2022. So the first thing that goes through my head is getting one over on them. I think last time we played, there was still some people not comfortable coming out into public event space. Uh, there was a lot of confusion why the game was being played two years later. Right, because everything. COVID. Yes, so, but everything's like the dust has settled. Everyone understands what's going on. We're in a better position off the pitch to make an impact so like I think this is a great opportunity for us to turn some heads who might be driving past us to go and watch TFC every week or people in Hamilton who just kind of don't think that we are up to standard which is still a problem in some cases right a special thanks to Tom I completely interrupted his workflow at his desk today but he was kind enough to take the time There will be, of course, a lot more to discuss on that front. But for now, we have to focus on the 9.05 Derby happening tomorrow that is within the Canadian Premier League. So a few reminders for this York United team. Number one, currently tied with Forge for fourth in the CPL standings. Again, Forge having that game in hand. Two, they're coming off a win against Halifax and a tie against Cavalry FC. And three, they're undergoing a massive rebrand, restructuring, whatever you want to call it. They recently fired their head coach, Martin Nash, and they're in search of a new head manager. Mind you, their current interim head coach, Mauro Eustaquio, will be in attendance tomorrow. 
I asked Ali and Bex during our conversation this morning what they're expecting from tomorrow's match and how they plan on bouncing back from the 3-0 loss against Atletico Ottawa. Yeah, as you said, we played them twice already. Um, I think we did both in those games. I think we played well in both games, won both games like pretty convincingly. So we have a blueprint of which we can follow and kind of go into the game knowing that if we do similar things we did in the last game, then we should have success tomorrow, which is the main thing, having that like positive understanding that we can go and do the same thing. I think it's going to be, be pretty heated. Um, obviously, they're going to come, come out and, and want to get a big result. From the, from the last time we were here, I think we had a, a good performance and they're going to be a little slighted by that, have a little extra ammunition. I think also anytime you switch up a coach, it uh, can galvanize a group. And so guys probably have a new lease on life. Guys are playing for, for positions, starting positions, want to get in the lineup. And so it's, uh, I think they're going to be an energized group, so we got to look out for that. Yeah, we did some good things. I think we went over it. We kind of gave goals away. I guess that's the easiest way to say it. Um, the first two... Even the third one is just kind of chasing the game, but the first two is nothing that they're doing special. For in our in our opinion, it's just something we're giving away. So we did some good stuff. Maybe the fatigue a little bit, but again, if you want to play for Forge, you got to play games every quickly like that Wednesday, Saturday, and win the game. So I'm not going to say, or we're not going to say, it's a great performance. But yeah, there's some good things, but we want to win those games. Yeah. So next time we play them, it'll be a it'll be a good one. Yeah, uh, I think we need a, a, a big a big performance. Um, something that was missing, I think, in that game was just energy. Um, if we can have a lot more movement off the ball, guys trying to create, runs in behind, all of those things, it's only going to benefit us. And the reality is uh, we're, we're two losses in a row in the, in the league. Obviously, coming off a big win in, in Montreal, it doesn't feel good to have that high and then, and then come back down to, to reality. So we want to make things right and no better way to do it against York at home. Well, considering this team now has a week of regular training under their belt, I'm sure the energy levels will be a little higher than what we saw in Ottawa. To finish off today's episode, I want to talk about part two of the Pro Combine that was hosted here on Wednesday. It was a group of the top 25 players who were selected from the first couple sessions. I watched the Combine. The quality was impressive. So here's what assistant coach and director of youth development, Kit Seladopoulos, had to say about the event. So we picked the top 25 from what we saw from the f- first sessions that we had uh, back in March. Uh, we brought them in and we ran a normal session just like we do every day here at the Forge so they can get to see how everything is and everything is uh, ran. Yeah, how did you see the development from the first couple of sessions to this one? And what can you say about the quality that these players brought? Quality was good. Um, it's different now because we had less players, so they get to do a little bit more. We, they get to get to play more, uh, but overall the quality was pretty good. And now you see them during season because they're playing with League One teams and all their teams that they're playing with. But I think it was pretty high level. These pro combines are something that you know not a lot of CPL teams are doing right now. So why do you think it's important that you provide these players an opportunity like this one? For us here at the Forge, I think it's important because we get to see players. We get to see different kind of players. We get to identify them in different programs and different avenues. That is the pro, that it's a university. Uh, And we want it to be a little bit different than every other combine. Every other combine you come and for two days and pretty much is that that's it. So we decided to say, okay, they're going to come in for two days and then we'll pick a top 25 to come back and live the experience. And also when you see less players out on the field, then maybe you can pick one or two that, yeah, maybe these guys are good to come in and have a training week or 10 days with us and see what happens. Right, okay, that was gonna be my next question as to like what the next steps are and is that is that it? So yes, we, we wanna, we're gonna evaluate all the players that were here and see where and when a couple of them could come in and train with us okay thank you so much all right that's all for today's episode tomorrow i'll be in the south plaza and stipley area pre-game so feel free to come say hi it's currently getting a bit of a makeover so you'll want to come see it thank you all so much for listening and uh, i look forward to seeing you here tomorrow 4 p.m kickoff against york united This has been Forge Daily with Mackenzie Farwell. If you like what you heard, please like, follow, subscribe, comment, and share. I think 
we we've always had threats. So in twenty twenty two, Borja scored a great goal to tie it up, take it to pens, etc. He's been scintillating this year. Benny Badi Bangers, a new face to TFC. Daniel Parra is a new face to TFC. Chris Colongo is arguably the most up and coming Canadian goalkeeper in the country at the moment. So like we have plenty of ways to hurt them and I'm sure they'll be watching their tape and taking us seriously and if they don't then Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Revenge.